Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we're going to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll begin our lesson with problem number 56. Problem number 56. Yesterday we did number 55, up to 55 that is, just to 56. We have a room full of people. We have a room full of people in a room full of n people. That's how many people we have. In a room full of n people, we are told E of them are English. F of them, F of them are French. And G of them are, believe it or not, German. The question is how many of them are of other nationality? How many of them are of the other nationality? As you can clearly see here, the reason why why people run away typically from when they hear algebra word problem is because a lot of the time people fail to make connection between what is algebra and what is arithmetic. Algebra and arithmetic they are one and the same thing. The only difference is that in arithmetic as we have said many times in all the previous videos of algebra in arithmetic we deal with concrete solid numbers, numbers that we can feel and touch in the sense intellectually that is, add and subtract that is in algebra, we deal with quantities that are unknown. But otherwise, there is no difference between the two concepts. Whatever we do in arithmetic is exactly what we do in algebra. So let's look at it as an arithmetic problem. Let's look at it as an arithmetic problem. If we had a, if we had a room full of 100 people, if we had a room full of 100 people, and if we were told that 10 of them are English, and 20 of them are French, and 30 of them are Germans, how many of them are other nationality? What would you have done? What would we have done? We would have simply added up these three numbers, 10 plus 20 plus 30, which is 60. We have a total of 100. We have 60 people who are either English, French, or German, which means there must be 40 people who are of other nationality. How did we get 40? We simply, simply subtracted 100. We simply subtracted these three numbers from 100. That's exactly what we're going to do here. How many of them are of other nationality? It's very simple. We take the total number of people and we subtract from it the number of people who are English, the number of people who are French, and the number of people who are German. That's it, you're done. That's your answer. How many people are of the other nationality? The answer is N minus E plus F plus G. Or if you want to open the parentheses, it will be N minus E minus F minus G. Let's do the next one, shall we? The next one is going to be a little bit more, a little bit more tricky. We start out with something very simple. The next one is going to be a little bit more tricky. And number 58 is going to be even more so. In a classroom full of, in a classroom full of a student, yes, you guessed it. In a classroom full of a students, B of them are boys. The question is very simple. The question simply is, question simply is, how many boys, how many more boys rather, how many more boys do we have compared to the number of girls? How many more boys do we have compared to the number of girls? Or we could have asked the same question a little bit differently. How many more girls do we have? How many more girls do we have? Compared to the number of boys. 
you do the problems. You do these two. Oh, for Christ's sake. You do these three two problems yourself. Pause the video, do them yourself. And then once you have it, compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds time. Well, how many boys do we have? Well, that's pretty straightforward. We are told this is how many boys we have. B, number of boys. This is how many total number of students do we have. If this is the total and this is the number of boys, that implies that the number of girls we have, number of girls that we have, must equal the total number of students, which is S minus B. That's the total number of girls. That's it, we're done. How many more boys do we have compared to girls? So we take the number of boys minus girls. That's how we find out. And here we'll do just the opposite. Number of girls minus the boys. Let's take care of the girls first. How many girls do we have? That's how many girls we have. S minus B. So S minus B minus B. That's the number of girls. That's the number of boys. That's it. We're done. S minus B minus B is going to be S minus 2B. Our final answer if the question was presented in these terms, how many more girls do we have compared to boys? The answer is S minus 2B. How many more boys do we have compared to girls? Let's find out. Number of boys we have is B minus the number of girls, which is S minus B. S minus B. So here, when we open the parentheses, we get S minus B minus S, and this minus and this minus is going to become positive and B. And we'll end up with 2B, 2B minus S. As you can see, it look, looks a little bit different. 2B minus S, S minus B. Because which makes sense. The number, the excess number of boys compared to girls is 2B minus S, and this is S minus B. S minus 2B, that is. You can plug in numbers here, and you will see it makes sense. You can plug in numbers, and it will make perfect sense. For example, for example, if we pretend that we have 30 boys, in a room full of 100 kids, in a room full of 100 kids, if you have 30 boys, then 70 must be girls. How many, how many more boys do we have compared to girls? Well, this is going to be tricky because now boys, it's going to be a negative quantity. This is going to be a negative quantity because there are only 30 boys and 70 girls. 30 minus 70 is going to be negative 40. This is going to be negative 40. 2 times 30 is 60. Minus 100, as you can see, is negative 40. So in a situation like this, this probably makes more sense. How many more, more girls do we have compared to boys if there are more girls than boys? Well, if there are 100 students or 30 of them are boys, 70 must be girls. So we have 70 girls, 30 boys. We have 40 more girls compared to boys. This better give us 40. S is equal to 100 minus 2 times B. We have 30 boys. 2 times 30 is 60. 100 minus, th six, one, 100 minus 60 is 40 which makes perfect sense. We have 40 more girls compared to boys because we only have 30 boys out of a total of 100. Therefore, we have 70 girls. 70 girls compared to 40, uh, com 70 girls compared to 30 boys. We have 40 more girls. Do you want to do one more right now? Let's do one more. It's going to be, the next one is going to be, again, even more tricky, trickier. Just keep paying attention. So we did the f very first one we did, number 56 that we did, was a very baby version. This is more of a medium problem. The one that we are about to do is even more, even, is even more tricky. So here we go. Number 58. The video is going to be a little bit long, but that's okay. In a group, of n people, f of them have full time jobs, p of them have part time jobs, and and the rest are unemployed. 
the rest are unemployed. The question is very straightforward. The question is very straightforward. What is the excess? What is the excess of the number of people who have jobs who have jobs who have jobs either full time or part time either full time or part time over the number who are unemployed who are unemployed I'm going to read the problem to you one more time and then I'm going to get out of your way I'm going to give you a few seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video I would like you to do the problem yourself first here we go we have a group full of 100 people and again to start out with if it's too intimidating if it's to start out with if it's too, too, too intimidating plug in numbers plug in numbers so that you can actually visualize the problem as to what is being asked. Let's pretend that we have 100 people out of which we are told that 40 of them have full-time jobs. 40 of them have full-time jobs. We are told that I was going to put a 30 here, listen carefully, I was going to put a 30 here but I'm not going to, pay, pay very close attention. If you put a 30 here, 40 plus 30 is 70 out of 100, 70 minus 100, 100 minus 70 would also give us 70. In other words, we'll have the same number of people who are unemployed as the number of people who have part-time jobs. You don't want that. You want distinct number. You want distinct number for each concept in the problem. It makes life easier. Never plug in the same value for the two different variables, for the two different concepts in the problem, if you're going to plug in values to convert it into an arithmetic problem. So I'm going to plug in a different one. Let's pretend 50 of them have five part-time jobs. The rest are unemployed. The rest are unemployed. So, 10 of them are unemployed because 40 plus 50 is 90, 10 of them are unemployed, you see? The question is, what is the excess of the people who have jobs, either part-time or full-time, in which case this is 40 plus 50, which is 90, over the number of people who are unemployed? What is the question asking? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the same question now in different words. I'm going to put it a little differently. What, is, what the question is asking is, how many more people in this town, in this town there are 100 people, who are in the labor market, in this town of 100 people who are in the labor market, how many more people, how many more people have jobs compared to the ones who don't? How many more people have jobs compared to the ones who don't? That's what it's asking. How many more people have jobs compared to the ones who don't? A very fancy way of saying the same thing is this. What is the X? And this is probably how they're going to phrase the question in the exam. As you know, the language on the exams, any exam that you're taking, is usually not very friendly. It's not very, very uh, informal. It's not very colloquial. It's very formal language. Whether you're preparing for SET or SAT or GRE or GMAT or TEs or HESES, these are all multiple choice questions. And their job is to make the questions as intimidating as possible. So instead of saying something in simple terms like this, how many more people have jobs compared to the ones who don't, they will ask you, what is the excess of the number of people who have jobs over the number who are unemployed? Do it yourself now. Now that you put it this way, it becomes actually very simple. We need the room. It's sort of erasing the problems. I'm going to erase this top part. Remember, F, P, and the rest. How many more people have jobs compared to the ones who don't? Let's first find out the number of people who have the jobs. Number of people, number of people who have jobs. And we are not making any distinction between a part-time job and a full-time job. A job is a job whether you're working part-time or full-time, it doesn't matter. You count it as employed. How many people have jobs? Well, F number of people have full-time jobs and P number of people have part-time jobs. So that was easy. Now I know how many people don't have a job. Number of people, number of people 
without a job. In other words, people who are unemployed. Well, people who are unemployed is going to be the total number of people who are looking for the total number of people that are that is in the group, which is usually referred to as a labor force in economics course. Number of people who either have a job or are looking for a job. That's for labor force. There are 100 people in such such in this group. That's the total number of people in our group, minus the people who have the jobs. This is going to represent the number of people without the job, which makes perfect sense. In our example, we had 100 here, we had 100 here, we had total number of people. We said that we had 30, 30 people with a full-time job. We said we had, I think it was, I don't remember what numbers I plugged in a little while ago. I have no idea. It wasn't 30, because 30 plus 50 is 80. I think it was 40. Makes no difference. So if we have 40 people with a full-time job, and if we have 50 people with a part-time job, 40 plus 50 is 90, 90 people have jobs, number of people who don't have a job is going to be the 100 minus 90. 100 minus F plus P. 100 minus F plus P. 10 people do not have a job. But that's not what the question is asking. The question is asking, that's not, that's not the end of the story. They're not asking how many people are unemployed. That would have been very simple. That's it. They're asking how many people, how many more people have jobs compared to the ones who don't. In other words, this is how many people have the jobs, this is how many people who don't have the jobs, we need to subtract this bottom quantity from the first quantity, of course, because the question was, what is the excess of the number, what is the excess of the number of people who have the jobs over the number who are unemployed? Let's do it. How many more people have jobs? How many more people have jobs? This is how many people have the jobs, which is the excess of people, excess of people, who have jobs over the ones who, who don't equals the number of people who have the jobs is this, F plus P minus the number of people who don't, which is N minus F plus P don't forget, this is the whole quantity. Don't forget to put the parentheses around it. Now we just have to simplify it. Now we just have to simplify it. So it's going to be F plus P minus N, and this minus and a minus will become plus F plus P. F plus P. We can leave it like this, but if you leave it like this, it looks ugly. So instead of writing f plus p minus n plus f plus p, f plus p and f plus p, that's 2 times f plus p, 2 times f plus p minus n. There is your final answer. That's the final answer. As you can see, we did three different scenarios. As you can see, we did three different scenarios, and each one of them was increasingly more difficult, more complicated than the one before that. See you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.